I'm Jeff Yarger. I'm professor of chemistry, biochemistry, and physics at Arizona State University. I'd like to introduce some fundamental concepts in thermodynamics based on the idea of equilibrium and its relation to reversible thermodynamics. So equilibrium is one of the fundamental tenets, whether you look at the laws or the postulates of thermodynamics, that needs to be understood to, because we're almost always in, in a lot of these dealing with, e, it's not stated, but we're, we're not talking about general thermodynamics, we're almost always dealing with equilibrium thermodynamics. And this helps define what the macroscopic ta particles we're talking about. So the zeroth law of thermodynamics um, is based on this. The first postulate uh, that Cowlin popularized for thermodynamics is based on this idea of equilibrium. And instead of going through some of the rigorous analysis of it, I just want to make sure we get kind of more of a, a, an intuition for it, one that we already have, one that's based on the idea if you take two things um, where they have basically um, diathermal walls or where the, the, the walls between two things, say one's a hot object, one's a cold, when you put them in contact with each other um, and, you know, the, it's a, it's a, the walls are allow thermal conductivity across it, what do you expect to happen? You expect the hot one to get a little cooler, the, the cool one to get a little hotter, and eventually that entire system, so one being A, one being B, to reach the same temperature. And then if you look at it over time, they will always kind of remain in that same temperature. Well, what, you know, that's what happens in A and B. What if B is also in contact and therefore over time in thermal equilibrium with some other system C, as we've shown here? Um, then what can you say about A and C? Well, you would say they're in thermal equilibrium as well. So, um, and this is not only true of thermal equilibrium, we think the same in what I would say common mechanical equilibrium. If you have a system and it's at some pressure in another system, maybe it's at a little bit higher of a pressure, you squeeze it a little more and then you put them in contact with each other and make a, either a flexible wall or you remove that barrier, what do you expect to happen over time? You expect the higher pressure one to reduce down to, and the, the um, lower pressure one to increase a little until both of them are in a mechanical equilibrium where the pressures are the same between them. And again, if you brought a third one in and said it's in mechanical equilibrium with one of the other ones, then you would say all three are. So uh, this is the general concept of equilibrium. And it really has a lot to do with its ability to be stable with respect to fluctuations. And how we generally think of this in physics and chemistry, a stable system, we think of it as like in the bottom of a well of some sort. And this is just showing it in two dimensions where we think of these energy landscapes being multidimensional. But, it, and what we mean by that is if you move this any at all, like, you know, its tendency is to come back down to this stable state. So any of these things that move it up in, for example, if this was energy, it has a tendency to come back down, you know, to a minimum. So a maximum in entropy of the system ends up causing these minimum in energies. And it's this minimization that will help define where our equilibrium state is. Because then it's stable with respect to any fluctuations that raise it, it comes back down. So it's not that equilibrium systems, macroscopics, don't fluctuate on very short timescales or under very microscopic conditions. It's that over the timescales or microscopic, if you average macroscopically or you average long enough in time, these all these fluctuations uh, dissipate away and you get an average value, no matter how you look at it. So you always see these macroscopic the same. Um, this can also happen even in what's a metastable state, which is a state that is uh, not globally stable. There might come back down and there be a lower minimum where this thing could come and this would be at a lower energy. But locally, with respect to small fluctuations, it is stable. This is very common in biochemistry. Oftentimes, a lot of biological systems are not at their most stable 
thermodynamic state. They're in a metastable state. But that metastable state, as long as the fluctuations are small, and of course small is relative, uh, typically defined by how big of energy or density fluctuations there are, but as long as they're small with respect to the size of these wells, so then you can still treat it in an equilibrium thermodynamic sense. So, and it's only when you get these unstable states that you have to wait for change to happen and it can happen in some irreversible way till you get to some other, you know, locally stable state that we can talk about again with equilibrium thermodynamics. So equilibrium thermodynamics, you know, oftentimes, you know, helps us, but it helps us to find, you know, the final and initial states when they start and end in these stable states. So reversibility in thermodynamics relies on this principle of equilibrium. And what we mean by that is, is that typically the way to make a reversible process is to keep it in equilibrium along every step of the process. So a very simple idea is, is if you have some ideal gas or gas at some you know, pressure, um, at, at, we'll just say a constant temperature, um, is constant and, and you're gonna just, you know, vary its um, uh, pressure, uh, an external pressure and see how the volume changes. We have a good sense for how that decreases over time. That if we do it slow enough so that at every step it stays in equilibrium, then it will be reversible, meaning that when we finish that process, if we just reverse that process, if instead of going up in pressure and watching the volume change, we went down and, and released more pressure and watched the volume expand, that it would follow in, you know, the, the same path um, that it did upon compression, the decompression would. Um, and that's very critical because that means we're basically, by making these changes small enough, slow enough, et cetera, we stay basically, by making them infinitesimal, we stay in equilibrium along the process so that we can use thermodynamics the entire way across it. Um, while if you do things in a very quick way or on a very small time, so very short time scales or, or very, um, uh, small time scale, uh, very small spatial scales, oftentimes these fluctuations are, you know, it causes an irreversible effect where it, now if you reverse it, it doesn't act the same. And this is not only with something like, you know, uh, PDV mechanical, but especially this becomes very relevant when we start talking about heat, when we start talking about heat or temperature, you know, entropy processes. So I've outlined some of the basics of, of reversible processes in lecture, in, in a first series of lecture notes that I posted on biopchem.education, you can find there, it's in set number one. This is showing, starting on, on page 17, um, you know, again, sh you know, going through very detailed, which I'm not gonna do here, uh, not only some of the concepts, but also um, you know, some of the examples. For example, the one I just showed where we, we look very explicitly at a very simple system, um, you know, undergoing, uh, you know, a reversible uh, compression in this case versus its decompression in the opposite case. Versus something that we would think of as not uh, reversible, like for example, if you started it at some high volume and you immediately decreased its volume, you know, instantaneously to a much smaller volume or an instantaneous compression and then watched the pressure uh, change after that, watch the pressure increase. You would see, as I've done here, the work is related to, the change in the work is related to the, uh, uh, in this case where we, we keep temperature constant is related to uh, minus PDV. And so, in a sense, when you integrate this, um, it's the integral under here, and you can see the amount of work is, is completely different in these cases, right? And it's because, as we saw before, the work, whether you state it like this or like this, is a path-dependent variable. And this is doing it in a reversible sense, while this is an irreversible sense. 
And, and I go through lecture notes to, to show some of the implications of that. So I, I encourage you to look at these lecture notes in, in more details to give you some very concrete examples and work some yourself. It's really working these problems that will really cement some of these ideas for you. And so I try to provide these notes so that you can see some very explicit uh, examples of this type of stuff. So in future uh, videos, we're gonna, to be able to work a lot of these um, examples and get better at problem solving in thermodynamics, one of the key things we need to be able to do is, is feel comfortable with the mathematics involved. And as you've seen from, from some stuff we've already covered, it's really being able to be very comfortable with basic calculus, specifically simple integration, but it, and it's because all of these things are going as derivatives, and because there's multivariables, it's typically partial derivatives with respect to other variables being constant, and then being able to integrate it when we want to look at some of the, how those changes affect things. Um, so uh, we're going to uh, have a lecture on that, and, and there'll be a bunch of additional information provided on some of the basic mathematics. And then we're going to go into some experimental computational thermodynamics. Then we're really going to get into the crux of, you know, the energy entropy relationship, you know, through what we have a very intuitive sense for, which is temperature. And all of this can be fur is further developed with lecture notes, some additional screencasts, uh, some working problems, you know, on a uh, publicly available website, biopchem.education. Uh, Thank you.